Okay, next example. This is a uniform distributed load. And this time, last time we didn't need to calculate the reaction forces. We could have if we wanted to, but we didn't need to. This time we'll need to. So we have 50 foot pounds times eight. That's um, 400, 400 pounds acting at point B, midpoint. So, and then we get the reaction forces. Um, we'll have a AY, the vertical of A, minus 400 pounds. That'd be the point, the equivalent force acting at point B. And then this is a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. 3, 4, 5. Which makes the sines and cosines a little easier. So how here we have uh, the force along D to C. It's a two-force member, so you know it has to be axial. The Y component is going to be the three-fifths. FDC, whatever that force FDC is. And it's acting... Uh, excuse me, let's get down here a second. AY minus 400, three-fifths times FDC. They use the moment equation to calculate a numerical value for FDC. This is FDC here. Okay. Uh, we tend to gravitate, I, I tend to do the same thing, gravitate to the force equation first before going to the moments. So my thinking is I'll, I'll gravitate to this first, write down the equations and then moment last, but the moment actually gives you an answer that you need for the for the first two. But we'll do it, you know, do it in whatever order makes sense to you. Okay. X direction forces, well, uh, you could have one at AY. Uh, you could have one at C, which is going to be FDC times the cosine of this angle, or four-fifths. So negative AX, so considering a force to the to the right, then you are, excuse me, a force to the left. Let's see if, yes, there we go. So here's, here's the free body diagram we're talking about. Instead of using words, we can refer to this diagram for all the forces and conventions and directions and AX is to the left. So we have a negative sign, negative AX, plus four-fifths FDC. FDC is considered to be positive, up, upward to the, to the left. And yes. And then finally, the moment about A, we can take... FDC, or excuse me, FDC, it's going up, it's counterclockwise, it's positive, it's three-fifths because of the sine of this, or uh, yes, sine of this angle. Lever arm is eight feet. And 400 pounds, looking at this, 400 pounds downward clockwise, that'd be negative at four feet so we get we get the three three reaction forces okay you know how to do reaction forces future problems i might just skip this step just for the sake of time now we divide up the beam into the left hand part and the right hand part so now you cut in the distributed load in half and on each beam, then, you have to think of the, at 200 pounds, acting on the, the left half, 200 pounds acting on the right half. And here's the moments, things, here's FDC, here's what's going on, FA. So we have these free body diagrams of the two halves. 
and it's straightforward just to go through the equations. So you can write down the equations, the equilibrium equations. And this is the left hand side. So we get, let's see, okay, tensile force. This time we're going to have a tensile force, which is kind of interesting. And that is because we do have, we do have AX and we do have a component of the FDC in the X direction. So yes, we will have a tensile force. And it looks like it makes absolutely no difference where in the beam it is. We're going to develop some equations to figure that out in a few minutes. Uh, VB. The shear force has to equal zero, which is kind of curious, interesting. Uh, 200 pounds up, 200 pounds down. This has to equal zero. Uh, now, on yes, this 200 pounds ought to be compensated by FDC. That the three fifths times 333 uh, should be 200 pounds and you'll find out that it is so the sum in the y directions also equals zero so VB equals zero and then finally moment about B we have we don't um, the AX won't won't count because it's its line of action is right through point B. So we have 200 acting at 2 feet clockwise and 200 acting at 4 feet. Uh, let's see, clockwise here. Oops, it's about point B. So this is counterclockwise. The 200 at 2 feet is acting counterclockwise around B. Around, uh, around B, this force is acting in the clockwise direction, B, negative 200 times 4. So we're going to have a negative 400 foot pounds of torque. And oh, I'm sorry. That's the moments due to these two forces. We want to find this moment, MB minus 400 foot pounds of torque equals zero, and then equate MB equals 400 foot pounds. To compensate for the negative 400 foot pounds, you got to have this much torque to keep the object in equilibrium. Okay. And take a look at section at this section. See if you come up with the same results. You should. We've talked about it just a hair here. Okay. There, that's it. Uh, now we have this problem here. This is uh, where we're looking at what is the internal load right here and we're at, we have to analyze it as a frame or machine we don't have to analyze everything though because we can consider this joint here's 600 newtons acting on it what does p and r have to be to make this to make this true we don't have to analyze the whole structure we don't have to find the reaction forces Two force member, the forces have to be collinear. Uh, even though there's no material here at all, the forces are transmitted through this L. So R times the sine of 45 is going to have to equal 600. And then P is going to have to be equal and opposite to R cosine 45. 
which would be 600 newton p is ha p would have to be 600 newtons are uh, going positive um, 0.707 r would have to equal 600 newtons okay so a 845 is r p is going to have to equal 600 does it say no it doesn't say you don't need it actually you don't need p because we we just have this that we're we're concerned with we have r which we need okay now here's our free body diagram r this is r acting at point C and here's our internal forces and moments so we can go figure everything out this is 600 newtons going to the right 600 newtons going down so NE has to equal 600 newtons VE is going to have to equal 600 newtons and ME is the only kind of tricky one um, but it's not that tricky. The moment about E can be it's counterclockwise. This is counterclockwise. 600 newtons times half a meter, 300 newton meters this way. So ME would have to equal, um, and ME is clockwise. So ME would have to equal 300 newton meters. Okay. What um, this note's kind of interesting. If we had a link here, if we had a link straight from here to here, then you would have uh, you wouldn't have any bending moments. The fact that this is L-shaped induces the bending moments. It adds, it adds loads to the member, and Hibbler is telling us it's a poor design, and that's that can be true. Sometimes you can't avoid it. You have some object here. You you've got to do an end run like this sometimes. So you just have to watch out for the loads that you're dealing with. I'm not going to solve this one. I am going to end the video right now, pick this up with the next video, but this is a three-dimensional problem, so I'm going to talk about it just a little bit, but not solve it.